let's go back to that exact same problem. And I'll, I'll change numbers on you where you have to go back and um, redo this. But let's go from sodium, let's go all the way over to, I don't know, say strontium. We're lucky, right? Strontium that. Okay. And let's forget um, shooting just a proton at it. That's kind of weak. Uh, let's shoot a lithium. Lithium at it. Okay, I'm going to shoot a lithium at it. Alright? This lithium is moving with a velocity of 3.5 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. Okay. But anytime we see a velocity, is it safe to assume that we're doing a uh, work equals negative Q W probably? In this test, almost. Yeah, almost. Um, there's always exceptions, whatever I said. For example, another time that you might not that that would get you in trouble is um, with the electron orbiting around the nucleus. Right? What's that problem? That's centripetal force. Centripetal force, right? which is m v squared over r, right, equals your Coulomb's law, k, q, one, q, zero over r squared. By the way, um, I'm going to hand back these centripetal force tests. Many of you um, botched up one problem on the centripetal force test, specifically the gravity problem, moon orbiting around. And the way you botched it was you forgot to use the centripetal force equation on the centripetal force test. Who would have figured? You got the universal gravitation part, right? You got the G M1 M2 over R squared. You just forgot that that equals centripetal force. M V squared over R. You forgot to set those two equal to each other. You forgot M V squared over R. You forgot the centripetal force part. This atom problem is the same idea, right? Coulomb's law. K Q1 Q2 over R squared equals centripetal force. M V squared over R. Right? You might allow you to solve. So velocity could mean for these problems of centripetal force idea. Right. Um, here, velocity coming in. Um, I'm going to shoot the lithium atom straight at it. So what, what's going to happen to this lithium atom is it's going to come, and as it's coming, what's happening? Slowing down. Slowing down, right? It's getting closer. The force is getting greater. It's slowing down. Right? So it, it slows down. It slows down until what? Uh, it stops. It turns around and comes back, right? The force gets so great that it ends up coming back. Now. I want you to find for me, start out with one, what voltage does it stop at and finally turn around? What is the final voltage? Assume that it starts from very, very far away. Assume that it starts from very, very far away. The initial uh, voltage would be zero. Okay. And you shoot it at it. At what final voltage does it stop? So the uh, question. What is final stop voltage, if you will, for my kind of abbreviating question? All right, so what is that final voltage that it finally stops and turns around at? What equation would you use for that? Good. Good guess. One half. MV final squared minus one half MV initial squared. That's just changing that mm -hmm. Equals negative Q delta V. That's changing voltage. Okay. So the negative Q, we use the charge of the lithium. Correct. Good. Little Q there, negative Q. That's the charge of the little guy, right? That's the charge of the little guy. Which one's the little guy that's moving? The lithium, right? That's the lithium. So you got to use the little Q here. Please be careful. Which one is the little guy doing the moving? Which is the big guy that's causing him to slow down or speed up? The big kid. Okay, so please, please, please be careful with that. Yes. Yes. For mass of 1 FMV squared, you'd also have to use the lithium. Where can you find the mass of the lithium atom? There. Up there on the periodic table. Now let me warn you. The atomic mass is measured in what? AMUs. The atomic mass is measured in A and U. But luckily for you, there is a way to convert. Look on your constant sheet. It tells you what one A and U is worth in kilograms. Very volatile. Merry Christmas. 
Yeah, have your column time. Yes, that number times whatever's on your constant sheet. So lithium's mass is going to be 6.941 times what 1 AMU is worth in kilograms. Mark. Um, well, you're asking what the base unit for mass is? What's the base unit for mass, ladies and gentlemen? Kilograms. Kilograms here in physics. Kilograms. Everything else is kind of that standard seconds, meters, all that. The one oddball here in physics is the kilograms. Anybody know what the oddball is in chemistry? Margin. No, it's not margin. You're on YouTube now. Um, wait, wait, wait. Is that grams? They use grams, which is the more technical base unit. We use kilograms. That's our oddball. It's, well, atmosphere, blah, whatever. Yeah. Uh, specifically, volume. What do they like as base unit for volume? Milliliters. Why does chemistry like milliliters? Small amounts. You don't want to mix liters of chemicals together. Right? Why do we like kilograms instead of grams? Yeah, measurable force. We're, we're talking about you and me and big objects easily normally measured in. One, find the final voltage. Right, where did the A and the Two. Yes. Yes. Number two. Number two. And I want you to find for me, if this is the case, what is the final stopping voltage? But by the way, um, You can also find for me the delta V. Delta V is the final voltage here. Number two. How far away from the strontium atom did the sodium, oh, that's not sodium, that's all lithium. How far away the strontium to the lithium stop? In other words, number two. Could you use? I want you to solve for me. Basically, R distance away. Please consider all these charges to be charges. Okay. What's the equation where we want to use this? Um, for the first one, you can use the. Uh, all right, so for number one, let's come back up here and let's think about this. Let, let me work through this with what y'all are saying. For this first one, I'm using work equals negative Q delta V. That becomes change in kinetic energy equals negative Q delta V. And then you can continue to solve there, right? Solve for your final, your final voltage is going to come out, um, you know, you got one half in the final squared minus one half in the initial squared equals negative Q, the F minus the I for your voltages, and there, there's your VF that you're solving for, you know, guess. Yes? Okay, yeah. If your initial velocity is zero, then you're going to Oh, it's not. Oh, it's not. In fact, that's a good point. Let's talk about this. Your initial velocity is what I gave you, right? I said we shot this lithium atom at this speed, right? So it's not zero. What is zero? Final. The lithium atom is coming to a stop around. So final. Now, um, number two, how far away from the strontium atom is the lithium stop? What do you want to use there? Take it. V equals K or R. Very good. Wait, I have a question. Did you not? It's probably not going to be like E equals V over D. What is, where, where does that come from? Um, e equals V over D works if we knew the electrical field at that point. So what you could have done there, if you really wanted to work all the way around, we use that equation to rise this one up here. You could have done E equals K e Q over R, R squared, plug that E then into E equals V over D and solve it. That, that wouldn't make no sense. Um, so, yeah. A and U's to kilograms. All right, uh, on your constant sheet, towards the very bottom, everybody, um, you'll see a rest mass of, you know, I'm looking four from the top here, or four from the bottom, excuse me. Rest mass of electrons. It says electron rest mass. 
and tells you an electron has a rest mass of 9.11 times 10 to the negative 30 hertz. The reason it has to be rest mass is because things that are moving actually have a little bit greater mass, but we haven't gotten to um, relativity yet and nuclear yet, so never mind that. So that's the mass of the electron, mass of proton, 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27. There's the neutron. Unified atomic mass, that is called the AMU. One AMU is worth 1.661 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. So we need to multiply that by the mass of that? Yeah, so to get the mass of a lithium, I take 6.9, 6.941. I just do that straight off the periodic table, right? The atomic mass straight off the periodic table, and I multiply by the mass of one AMU, right? Which was 1.661 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. So now I'm in kilograms. Okay. So whenever you use the top number, you're doing that whenever you're trying to do what? All right, the top number on the periodic table, what does that represent? Electron, pro proton, right? That's what it represents, right? And, and if it's not an ion, same number of electrons. Okay. Um, that only tells you the number of protons. What does the bottom number generally give you? The mass. The mass. The mass the number of and it's, it's yeah, if we generalize this, it's the average, right? But if we generalize this, it's number of protons plus number of neutrons. Right? It, it's the mass of all the protons plus the mass of all the neutrons in AMU. So the reason that come out whole numbers is an average. Don't worry about any of that, right? Don't worry about any of that. Instead, the bottom number gives you the mass of the atom. The top number gives you the charge of the atom. Correct. That's the number of protons, so it's that number to get the charge. That number times. Good. And to get the mass, it's the mass down there in the bottom in red times massive one AU. Okay? All right. Let your work on these problems. Now, um, let me reverse it. Oh, let me reverse oh. it. A 5.5 .5 microcoulomb charge here. An electron, let's make this a negative. An electron is released from electrical field A. That has a distance to that equal potential line of 52 centimeters. And it's allowed to move to B. Um, that has, that is, oh, let's do 120 centimeters away. So question one. What is the final velocity of the electron, a little negative sign there, um, at, that's not theta, that should be a b. Number two. What is the final velocity if I let the electron go very, very far away? Velocity. What is the final velocity? Yeah, sorry about that. What is the final velocity? the electron at B, and then forget the B part. Instead, we're just going to let the electron keep on going. What is the final velocity very, very far away? What is, what is it? Joe? 